that in five years of war, uh, it's cost the Syrian economy $275 billion. I mean, just a phenomenal figure. And that's, that's money that's lost forever, money that would normally have been invested in education systems, in health, in agricultural productivity and economic development. What we found is that 50% uh, of Syrians are now unemployed. 50%, um, there's a 50% reduction in enrolments for children in primary and secondary school. 50% of hospitals have been destroyed. 50% of doctors are no longer working, either killed or fled or unable to work because the facilities are broken down. Immunisation, which was up over 90%, is now only 50%. Uh, wheat and, and uh, poultry production is now only 50% of what it was uh, five years ago. So massive uh, deinvestment, de-development. One of the biggest challenges working in Syria itself is getting access to the communities of greatest need. So where we are able to work, and for World Vision that's in northern Syria uh, as a cross-border operation from Turkey, we're providing immediate life-saving support in terms of food, support to shelter, water and sanitation and hygiene support is a really critical need when you've got large numbers of people congregating together with very poor facilities. It's a critical health need, especially for the children. In addition to that, we have health programs. So we support a maternal and child health hospital, for example, in Azaz. We, um, we have mobile health teams and we support through a voucher program that internally displaced people and local communities can access health through paying local practitioners, health practitioners, through this voucher program. In addition to that, we, we have child-friendly spaces, which are trying to provide from, um, as a sector, we know that the best way to help children really um, deal with the terrible experiences that they've had as a psychosocial support is to give them the opportunity to be children, to have a safe place to come, to play, to be with other children, to forget for a little while what's actually around them and what they've fled. Uh, in addition to that, we do um, advanced literacy courses. We have um, after-school remedial classes to try and help the Syrian children who are in schools in Jordan um, and in Lebanon to meet the standards and to understand the language requirements so that they're able to be effective within those schools. And then we were able to, for a short time, run classes, uh, informal education classes for those children that were unable to access the formal education system. But uh, sometimes governments are, are not particularly supportive of that. Yeah, one of the things that continually amazes me as a humanitarian, there's always a budget and it's always a limited budget to respond to the level of humanitarian need. And if you look at the whole international project and European project post-World War II, it's been about guaranteeing human rights and it's been about preventing this kind of suffering. Yet there is always a limit. When the needs are at their most extreme, that limit kicks in. But there's never a limit uh, to the losses and that's what we're trying to show with this report. The extent of loss, and it's not just a loss for Syria and its neighbours, in an interconnected economic world we all will bear the cost, the burden of those losses. And so by bringing that out we're wanting to highlight that actually, even on pure economic terms, on the profit and loss sheet, we cannot afford not to respond more fully to the need for humanitarian access and to provide humanitarian support to all who need it and to invest in the future now and to begin to plan for that investment now so that we can respond well when that opportunity arises.